This is Andy Purewell for Boxing News. I'm here in Saudi Arabia and I'm joined by trainer Tony Sims. Tony, good to see you. How are you doing? How are you finding this beautiful weather? Yeah, it's lovely and, uh, you know, we they, they've sorted us out a lovely villa as well to stay in. The camp's good, you know, the gym's good here and we, we've had it good for the last three weeks. I know we've just had a brief chat there off camera about kind of the toll it can take being away from home for so long. Three weeks out here, Tony, how have you found it? Are you missing home? I think we always miss home. We always miss the UK because obviously that's where our roots are from. But training-wise, I mean, you know, like Joe's got his head down training and uh, it's been a, it's been really a really good camp and, um, you know, thoroughly enjoyed being here and thoroughly enjoyed doing the camp with him. I know you're one who enjoys the warm weather more than most. You've been enjoying the, the sunbathing element? <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's roasting here every day. So, like, have you, as you've seen, there's not much really to do here apart from train and rest and then train and rest. So, in my rest period, uh, I've just been catching a few of the rays and a little bit in the pole. Tony, before obviously we come on to the man who's fighting on Saturday that you'll be working for and guiding to victory, hopefully in your case. Um, yesterday, it kind of all erupted at the media day between John Fury and Team Usyk. And the reason I'm going to start with you is because on my way over, I saw a video, which I didn't see until uh, the, the Uber drive uh, over, like I say, of John Fury somewhat seemed to be charging in your direction. <laughs> <laughs> I think what it was... Where it was in the melee, I think there was a bag on the floor. I think he went to run into the crowd again and he tripped over the bag and run into me. And my white trainers finished up with all his claret all over him. So I said to him, he's got to buy me a new pair. But uh, yeah, no, nah, I, um, funny enough, I was doing an interview at the time and uh, over the back and I look round and see it all going on. So we kind of cut short the interview and kind of run over there. But, um, yeah, I mean, it all adds to the uh, to the week, and uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great week for the for the media anyway. With uh, with two with both the teams, Fury and Usyk's team. I mean, it certainly made our day a lot more chaotic yesterday, shall we say, Tony? Hence why um, we couldn't catch up yesterday. Uh, do you think, though, especially with Alexander? He because English isn't his first language, he's made no secret that he doesn't necessarily speak it as well as what he might understand it. Um, do you think he's going to use that as added fuel to try and take it out on Tyson? Because he didn't seem best pleased about it when we caught up with him and he reacted to it yesterday. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I didn't know his response on it because I, I haven't really watched it, uh, his response. But listen, it was all like you know, a bit of pushing and shoving and there was there was plenty of uh, security in there anyway, so nothing really much that much happened apart from that little tiny incident. So it just I think it just all adds to the melee of what's going on. Uh you know, it's always gonna be chaotic when you get two big teams in the one room and you know, one team is shouting for their guy and the other team shouting for their guy. It's always gonna be a little bit chaotic in there and I thought it was a bit strange that we all the teams, all the fighters and all their teams was like pushed into this kind of one room. And, you know, they thought it probably would have been better if you would have had probably one team at a time. But maybe they thought that was going to take so long, so they put everyone together. But everyone was just, as you see, and everyone was just standing in the same room. So there was there was probably always going to be some, some sort of uh, thing going to happen there. What are your thoughts on that main event tomorrow night? Uh, oh, not tomorrow night, sorry, Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday night, I was <laughs> going to say, yeah, where's the main event tomorrow <laughs> night? Uh, Me and Charlie Parsons on Friday night, mate. I'm yeah. West Brom, he's Southampton, so <laughs> second leg of a playoff final. It's, uh, it'll be a feisty one, man. Oh, yeah, it's a big game, that. Yeah, it? drew the first leg nil-nil, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a big game, that. And uh, funny enough, my really close friend, Mick Downs, his boy plays for Southampton at the minute. Flynn Downs, I think he's yes. probably one of the best players in he's the team. He's centre midfielder started yeah, against us. He's on it? loan from West Ham. So um, maybe I might be leaning towards them to get through, to be honest. I think but we've got to cut this interview short then, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, the main event on Saturday, is, 
you know, the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. I think everybody's been talking about it. It's on everybody's lips in the, in the boxing world. Obviously, we haven't seen an undisputed since Lennox Lewis. And uh, and it does mean a lot, you know, because they're, obviously the heavyweights is the gold golden chalice of boxing. And um, to have an undisputed heavyweight champion in the world is, is like a massive thing for us boxing people for us boxing fans and uh you know so this fight is probably the biggest fight we've seen in like 20 25 years what do you think the difference could be for either man i think the difference i i believe will be fury's size and his awkwardness i think with us Usyk, he, he's not a natural heavyweight. He, he's he's a cruiserweight that's obviously banged on a few pounds to move up to heavyweight because obviously that's where the division the, the divisional money is. And, um, and he, he's a great fighter. He's done everything as an amateur and undisputed cruiserweight champion. Now going on to try and win the undisputed heavyweight title. And we've seen him defeat, you know, good heavyweights in. Uh, Obviously, in Joshua, he beat Joshua twice, and you know he beat Chisora and Dubois. But I just think to beat Tyson Fury, I'm not sure whether uh, I'm not sure whether he can beat Tyson Fury. I think Ty, you know, his horses for courses, and I think Tyson's style might be a bit much for him and his size and his reach. Whoever's successful in that main event on Saturday, Tony, whose legacy? do you think would benefit more from it? A Tyson Fury victory, given what he's achieved at heavyweight, or an Alexander Usyk victory, given what he'd have done at cruiserweight and then at heavyweight? Well, both, really, because um, whoever wins that fight on Saturday night is obviously the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. And, you know, both them fighters' records are outstanding. Um, you know, the achievements that they've both done in their life is like, you know, second to none, and uh, obviously as a Brit, we're all back in Tyson Fury. We all we all want Tyson Fury to win win on uh, win the undisputed, and hopefully down the line set up a fight with Joshua. Obviously, we've seen just one more on that. Um, you mentioned Anthony Joshua there. We've seen uh, certainly kind of. Uh, <laughs> Anthony Joshua's development since he's linked up with Ben Davis and two very good performances recently if he was to continue this vein of form how much more would you rate his chances against either Alexander Usyk or Tyson Fury which would be an Usyk trilogy or Fury for the first time well it's what they, what what most people say you can only go by your last fight and um, if if we go back to when AJ lost to Usyk and then Fury was beating Wilder. You know, everyone was saying that Fury was the much better fighter. Um, obviously, Fury's had... Um, obviously, Fury boxing Garno and didn't look great. And Joshua knocked out in Garno, so now we're going on their last fights. And that's what a lot of people go, you're only as good as your last fights. So that's what people are looking at. But then if Fury beats Usyk, a man who's beat Joshua twice, then the favour's going to go back into the Fury court. So, and, that, and that's how boxing it is. It's all on your last fight, really. So, at the moment, people will be saying Joshua's the favourite. If Fury wins, people will be saying Fury's the favourite. So, we'll have to wait and see. Moving away from all things Fury Usyk, let's come on to your man Joe Cordina. Uh, again, three weeks out here in a fight week. What's the plan? How do you overcome Anto Kakacho? Yeah, Kakacho is a good challenger. He's obviously the IBO champion, and we, you know, Joe's took him seriously for this fight. You know, training wise, and he's he got ready for him. Obviously, we had the camp in Los Angeles before this, and uh, and then obviously the fight got called off. So. He's had two camps back to back, really, which is, which is, you know, he had a little break in between, so which has been good for him. And um, he, this camp's obviously, as we said earlier, has been really good. And obviously, I know Kakachi because 
the one loss on his record, I trained Martin J. Ward to, to win that fight against him for the British and Commonwealth, that was. But that was a few years ago now, so he's obviously improved since then. And uh, he's, he's like a world-level fight. And, you know, obviously I'm favouring my man to come through this fight. I just think that if you look if you look at Caldina and then you look at Kakachi, the, the difference in opposition and their face. Caldina's faced a lot more higher opposition than Kakashi's faced. And, um, and he's deservedly bit the IBF champion through that. Vavazka's fight in Monaco um, was probably a lot closer than what many would have anticipated going into it, Tony. Is there any risk in your eyes that because Kakache isn't one of those leading names that Joe's wanted to share the ring with for a while now, if you have a champions, if you have big names, any risk that he maybe doesn't perform to the levels you know he can? Um, I don't think so. I think with this fight, he's took Kakache more seriously. I think, like you say there, didn't really know much about Vasquez um, at all and only that he'd lost to Ray Ford but a lot of people said that he won that fight but didn't really know much about him um, but he was actually a really decent fighter he was a really good fighter and um, he was very tricky he was very hard to nail clean and uh, I do feel like Joe underestimated him a little bit being an unknown and um, like you say, obviously Joe wants the big fights, the big names, and uh, and deservedly so as well. So he knows that to get them big names and them big fights, he needs to come through a Kakachi to get to get there. So I think um, he, he's probably in great condition mentally and physically for this fight. I know you don't want to look beyond Saturday, but I've just mentioned the likes of Lomachenko, um, Shakur Stevenson, obviously be up at lightweight, um, but then you got Manuel Navarrete as well. If you had the opportunity to pick one name next, a big fight, whether it be for a world title or not, who would you like to see Joe face? Well, any one of them big names you say there, or even a unification. You know, you've got the other, the other uh, fighters like Lamont Roach Jr., who's a, who's a good unification fight. And then you've got the likes of Lee Wood back home, who's moved, moved up to yeah. super featherweight, which will be a big fight for Britain. So you you got a couple of weight uh, fighters that is weight still that he can, you know, still land in big fights. But obviously, the names you name you name there, Lomachenko, a lightweight, Shaka Stevenson, they're they're obviously the names that he wants to fight. So, you know, we'll just let's get this fight out of the way first. So obviously, I want him to focus on this fight, and then you look at the big fights afterwards. Um, moving away from Joe Tony, obviously recently had the news of British Boxing Board of Control and UCAD's successful appeal against Conor Penn's previously um, successful appeal with the NADP. What can you tell me and what was your immediate reaction to that news break? It? Yeah, I don't think really a lot has changed in, in other than, you know, it's still ongoing. Um, you know, the, uh, it was a pre-hearing that that he won, and it was, and the and the board won the the appeal against the pre-hearing. So as far as I know, it's going to go to the full hearing. So there's not much I can say really. I'll be pleased when it's over and done with. It seems like I think it's two years in July from his test, so it's like it seems to be dragging on forever. But I'll be pleased when the full hearing's over and done with, and then um, he can get on with his career. It is very date for when a rough idea as to when that full hearing will take place then? No, we're waiting to hear that at the moment, so I don't really know much about that. We know obviously with, with that UCAD and board outcome, um, UCAD and British Boxing Board of Control outcome, that is, um, he's been placed back under a, a provisional suspension. So with that in mind, what does that detail? Obviously, we know it means that he can't currently box in the UK under them. Um, what's kind of your involvement? Are you still allowed to train him? or? Uh, I don't really know all about that yet. It's just... Uh, Obviously, it's, everything's with the lawyers, so I'll just have to wait and see um, what's the next, you know, what's the next step. But I'm just hearing that it's uh, it's going to go to a full hearing now, and we'll just see the outcome of the full hearing. I did see Sean Gibbons um, had come out and said that apparently the Pacquiao fight was relatively close until finding out the decision from the appeal. How close was the Pacquiao fight? Um, obviously, we. We, they bumped into each other over here last time in Saudi, so there was some talks went on behind the scenes, and 
I think we probably probably could have got that fight on. But listen, there's a lot of big fights waiting for Conor Ben once uh, once this is over and done with. So we'll just wait and see what the next step is. What what again? I know a lot's going to rely on how the coming months play out. But what is currently kind of the plan? Is it thinking about those other big names in his division? Is it the likes of Manny Pacquiao coming back, moving up for for those other big fights? How do you envisage the coming? months years of his career yeah I just think like because of his name like Ben same as Eubank where they're always going to be big names and always going to people are going to want to fight them you know um, and uh, they'll always be in bit involved in big fights so he just needs to get this out of the way and then move on with his career and that's what I think like you know it's, as I say it's dragging on and he just wants to fight really so We'll just see what the outcome is. One name I'm going to ask about is boot tennis. Obviously, he's recently signed with Matt Troom, um, but there hasn't been quite as much noise around the name of boot tennis and Conor Ben potentially crossing paths. Is that not a fight which is in consideration? All the fights are in consideration for him. Um, you know, all the names like Gar Ryan Garcia has been piping up about Conor Ben fighting Conor Ben. That's what I'm saying. All the big names want to fight him. It's just uh, Javonta Davis, they all want to fight him, so it's just about, and I'm sure all the fans want to watch them fights as well, it's just uh, it's just about getting getting this over the line and seeing what his next step is really, and the lawyers are in charge of that, it's, that, it's all out of our hands really, so uh, whatever whatever's going on there, you know, we'll hear from them. Tony, just one final thing um, with the gym, John Ryder, your new assistant, how's he finding things as a trainer? Yeah, he's good, he's... Um, He's applied for his professional licence and um, he's assisting me in the gym at the moment. And, and luckily he is because we've got George Lidard fighting a week later uh, from when I get back from here so in Leeds. So um, we're fairly busy when I get back from here. So luckily enough, he's been uh, looking after the boys while I've been while I've been over here with Joe Caldina. You mentioned Leeds, obviously that headline about Josh Taylor, Jack Cattrall too. Um, what's your thoughts on it, Tony? Yeah, another great fight, another uh, another domestic fight. You know, we've seen the build up to that as well. It's, uh, you know, we, we, it's been a good build up, and uh, obviously the last fight, um, same as everybody else, really. I thought Jack Catchell won that last fight, um, and he's probably going into this fight quite a big favourite. I feel like Josh Taylor. We'll probably come in better prepared this time for this fight. But um, I think you've still got to uh, tip Catterall to win this fight. Walter Zang the following week, back out here in Saudi Arabia, Tony. Um, what's your thoughts on that fight? The Deontay Wilder and Gilles Zhang. Yeah, good fight. Good fight. I, I feel like that can go either way. I don't know whether... I mean, Wilder's last performance was bizarre, really. He looked like... He just weren't prepared for it at all, mentally or physically. Um, don't know whether the, the time spent out of the ring or whether he just weren't there, but he looked awful in that last fight. Um, and Zhang's always dangerous, he, even though he got beat by Parker and like he was clipping him and putting him down. So they're both dangerous fighters. He, he could go either way, that fight, either way. Whoever, I think whoever connects cleanly, could, he could go. Terence Crawford and Israel Madrimov, Terence obviously stepping up to 154 and Madrimov for many is arguably the best in that division uh, currently. Oh, Crawford massively on that fight. I think he'd be an overwhelming favourite. I think he's in a different league, different level to Madrimov completely. I see, I see. I actually see Crawford stopping him. I don't think he'll go the distance with Crawford. It's a big call that Tony. Yeah. I've just had um, Joe, Joe singing his praises because obviously at one point they'd have been crossing paths, not fighting, yeah. but amateur scene. Yeah, I just don't think he's nowhere near that level of fighting. Uh, and then just a final one, uh, one which most people have kind of got a, an overwhelming favourite in, Javonta Davis and Frank Martin. Yeah, I ain't seen a lot of Frank Martin, but I've heard he's, he, I've heard he's quite a smart operator. He's, I've heard he's a good fighter and... Uh, but obviously, Javon is like, in I feel he's a, he's a level above everyone. He's uh, his weight, and um, I think he'll be the overwhelming favourite to win that fight. 
Tony, it's a pleasure as always. Obviously, good luck on Saturday night. I'm sure I'll catch you about as the week progresses. Enjoy the grand arrivals to come this evening. And thank you for speaking to me in Boxing News. Good to see you, Andy. No problem, mate.